Lachlan Steinort is a young fella from Dolby who uh, works on his parents' cattle property, as uh, a lot of young people do. The difference is that Lachlan is predominantly confined to a wheelchair, but his wheelchair doesn't stop him from doing cattle work or uh, operating the tractor. It also doesn't stop him from being a very active sports person. When he's not working on the farm, he drives between one and a half to two hours each week from just outside of Dolby to uh, University of Southern Queensland uh, to play and coach wheelchair basketball. But at the moment, Lachlan is volunteering for the Sporting Wheelies Association uh, to try and uh, rope in some CEOs to be a part of the Sporting Wheelies CEO Challenge. What's it all about? Let's find out a little bit more. Lachlan joins me in the studio now. Lachlan, uh, good morning. Welcome. Great to have a chat to you this morning. Thanks very much for having me. Now, you've just navigated this replica of K2 that we've got out the front that whoever built this building called Wheelchair Access, so I commend you for it. And I want to talk to you about that in a moment, but can I ask firstly a little bit of your story, how you've ended up in a wheelchair? Uh, So I was born with spina bifida. Yeah, grew up walking till I was about um, 12 years old and then ended up using the wheelchair because going up and down the stairs at school um, damaged my hips and my knees a bit too much. So Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So does that make it easier having walked? Does that make it the transition in some way easier or harder? Well, I do still walk short distances. So, right, okay. Um, yeah, I can you know walk around the house or at home if I've got somewhere to sit down. So it's not... Like I'm confined to the chair, but yeah, I guess it's um yeah easy. I think it's easier to have experienced both. Yeah. How challenging was it to get to the stage where you you can sort of help out on the farm in your wheelchair? Because that seems incredible. And even though you can walk the short distances, I would imagine a lot of the stuff you're doing on the farm is from within the wheelchair. Am I right? Um, not a lot actually. No. Oh, okay. um, so I walk mainly at home. Um, or you know, if I'm driving a tractor or riding a motorbike, you know, yep. that's pretty pretty easy for me to do. Um, as long as I don't have to stand for long periods of time. How do you know when you've walked too long or stood too long? Is, is it a pain aspect or is it just a fatigue very easily? Or? Just, just tiredness in my legs. You can feel it in, in your leg muscles. Right, yeah. okay. If you continue that, do you pay for it the next day? I mean, does that sort of make it worse straight after that yeah so for an example i broke down in the vehicle down the paddock one day um and i had yep. to walk oh, it's probably a couple of kilometers home and yeah i was really paying for it the next day i was pretty sore in terms of navigating life say in shopping centers and and that sort of thing you would still have direct experience of access issues and how varied they can be from one shop to another or one shopping center to another or one radio station to another yeah for sure like everything's different the place might have a ramp but it might be designed poorly it might go up to a door and not have a flat spot at the top so that you can open the door easily right and we were saying the one outside here and if people have uh, uh, walked up this ramp you know you might not notice it walking but i thought the problem with the one here is that it was you know just ridiculously steep but uh, you identified i think that it was the narrow and the fact that it was sloped you know to the side that makes it really really challenging yeah so it's just it wasn't that steep for me but just the angle of it it pulls your chair to one side which means you can only push with one arm and that yes. makes it more challenging yeah yeah i guess people not understanding that or not understanding from just looking at at ramps like that leads to your promoting the sporting wheelies ceo challenge that's coming up tell me a bit about this event um so ceos and um, executives or community leaders can sign up uh, and they need to commit to a uh, minimum five thousand dollar fundraising uh, and once they reach that target on the 16th of june they get given a wheelchair and then they experience um, a day in a wheelchair in their environment Are they given set tasks or is it just basically whatever they were going to take on that day? I think basically whatever they would normally do in a day, they need to know whether they can do it. Even though it may seem obvious, explain to me what that achieves. I guess it's about awareness and showing what disabled people have to go through on a day-to-day basis that able-bodied people take for granted. Like, you know, it could be as simple as opening a door or entering a building or, you know, traversing through a shopping centre. Yeah. I was saying to you off air that, I didn't have to do it for a full day, but uh, in a previous place that I worked, they did a similar challenge to this, but it was more of a media thing, and I guess it was to raise awareness, but 
they put you in a wheelchair for I think about two hours and gave you a, a set list of tasks you know they picked the from memory one of them was the Centrelink office which had a particularly steep path into it and uh, then you had to grab forms off a counter which was ridiculously high you know and just to highlight to people who never have to think about this and it was really really revealing that which I, I think is, that's that's the whole aim isn't it yeah it is yeah it'd be yeah. good for as many people as possible to get that experience so that they know what it's like when you're in the wheelchair what did you find the hardest like is there one recurring theme sort of on a streetscape that uh, you feel they've always gotten wrong that makes things particularly challenging um probably footpaths some places there are footpaths some there aren't sometimes the footpaths are really rough or they're on a really big angle Um, so again you might have to push for a couple of kilometers with one arm which like outside is is pretty hard going that's right yeah. yeah and that was only for a short time so yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. I do remember too you know, try, crossing roads and you felt vulnerable if there was a truck there. You know, you're sort of looking straight into a truck's grill, you know, and not that there's anything they can do about that, but it's just good to highlight that, you know, you can feel very, very exposed yeah, in, and that, in a wheelchair. And that's the thing, you know, sometimes if there's not a footpath, you have to go down the side of the road, which is quite dangerous yeah yeah it's a crazy situation so you're asking for people to take part in the ceo challenge how do they sign on and get on board uh just go to the sporting wheelies website sportingwheelies.org.au and sign up there the money raised what does it go to it goes to the sporting wheelies yeah so it goes to sporting wheelies to help local programs and to help with their purpose-built facility in milton facility in in terms of what so it's got a specialized gym that caters to people with disabilities um, right, and various okay. different sporting facilities that people can use. Lachlan, on the topic of wheelchair basketball, this is a major sport for you. You're a devotee of the sport. How long have you been playing? Uh, about 25 years now. Wow, yeah. gee whiz. I can't imagine a sport where you know you have to exert so much energy and skill. I mean, the fitness, I reckon it would probably surpass the fitness of a rugby league player because you guys are working you know and it's the stop and start and everything how long does it take to get your fitness up to that level oh i think it depends on the individual but you can get to that level pretty quickly or you can take a few years it just depends on the individual so how did you find it um i found it pretty good um i started out in athletics when i was younger and then moved across to basketball so i've always enjoyed sports it's a modified wheelchair, isn't it, designed for, what, easier manoeuvrability to play basketball? Or? Yeah, so the wheels have got a bigger angle on them, and there's also a bumper bar on the front so that you don't get your feet hurt when you run into somebody. And there is a lot of running into there is. other it's play. A, it's not a non-contact sport. No, it's a full contact sport. It is. I think, yeah. So you're recruiting people in a wheelchair to come and give it a go. How popular is the sport at the moment amongst people in a wheelchair? Uh, yeah, it's a very popular sport. Um We'd like to get more people in Toowoomba. Um, Numbers fluctuate up and down, but yeah, we've got probably 12 each week at the moment. Okay. And all ages? Yeah, any age can play, any ability. And so what do they have to do if they're uh, listening now and thinking, wouldn't mind giving it a go, but didn't realise Toowoomba had a comp? And I guess we're not just talking to people in Toowoomba either. I mean, you commute to the games and to training from uh, Dolby or beyond Dolby? Yeah, 70 kilometres west of Dolby. Right, okay. It's about a two-hour trip each way for me. That's dedication for you. I enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they can go to the Sporting Wheelies website um, or they can um, come along on a Friday night. We play from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and they can just have a go. Where do you play? Uh, at USQ, at Clive, Bof- right. Clive Berghofer Recreation Centre. There you go. Well worth getting involved in, but certainly the Sporting Wheelies CEO Challenge is well worth getting involved in. If you want to find out more information, uh, just have a look at the Sporting Wheelies website and uh, just be a part of it. It's, it's about raising awareness and I guess raising awareness with the people who are often in a position to really bring about or inspire positive change in this regard.